Welcome to the course of Power System Analysis with the code of 18E62. The course instructions what I am intended to share with the students is that my main objective is to provide you with a learning environment in which you will learn the fundamental of power systems. To take ownership of learning process, that is, the I am adopting here, there should be three I's, that is, initiative, involvement, and interactive participation of the students. These are the key for an effective learning experience. That is, I am expecting you have to interact there should be initiative from your side, there is an involvement in the teaching learning process. Then my appeal is to inform if you do not feel that I have been successful in this goal. So that if you have got any the problems, just you have to discuss with me and get it clarified as and when if you have got any doubts. The finally, switch on your brain cells for curiosity of learning the power system analysis. The objective of this uh, power system analysis course, which is introduced for the undergraduate course of BE degree, for to introduce a broad range of theory and methods related to AC power system analysis and design. To know about the, the power system, its analysis and the design of the, the power system. Also to develop familiarity with the power system in engineering components, equipment and analytical tools. Okay, we are studying in detail that is the main objective is that to know about the power system engineering components which are the components which is involved in the power system then how you have to model it, how to analyze and what are the different analytical tools you are using for the analysis purpose. For this analysis, what the basic need is a single line diagram, impedance diagram and the reactance diagram that also we are studying. Then this analysis are made as per the power unit quantity. Then if you want an actual quantity, once again you have to get the, the actual quantity from the the power unit quantity. These are the main objective of the this particular course to know about what you mean by the power system, power system analysis and its a design and to achieve this power system analysis with the help of single line diagram, impedance diagram, reactance diagram with the help of the analytic tools you are using. The module 1 which is comprises of that is the introduction of the, the power system and single phase, uh, single phase representation of balance three phase networks. How we are representing three phase network using a single phase representation. Then how to draw the one line diagram. Then what is the importance of the one line diagram. From one line diagram for analysis purpose how we are drawing the impedance diagram and simplified version of the reactance diagram then how to convert to the power unit quantities and the different models of the power system component such as synchronous machine power transformer transmission line as well as the different loads how we have to represent these different the power system components we know that the an electric power system made up of the electrical components mainly there are three main components in the power system one is the generate transmit and you have to utilize that is generation transmission and distribution for utility purposes also the electrical power system came into existence way back in 1880s since that the time has have grown enormously in size and the complex complexity that is as and when 
the population is rich increases at the same time the the comfort level is more and more then the need of electricity is goes on increasing as the demand increases then there is a generation increases connecting network in the form of transmission and distribution is also goes on increasing and the power system is become the complex as the power system increased in size so did the number of lines is increasing substations are increasing transformers also increasing switch gear production is also increasing and so on that is as the demand increases the necessity of generation increases necessity of transmission is increases the networking for the distribution is also the increases then the planning the overall power system and its design and operation of the power system requires in depth engineering studies to evaluate existing and proposed system performance reliability safety and the economics then the question arises here then why we are going for the power system analysis that is what he is telling in the last part is that that is the overall planning design operation of power system requires in depth engineering study to evaluate existing for present scenario what is the demand what is the generation how we are meeting the demand by the existing generation how we are transmitting and uh, transmitting and distributing then what is the reliable of the, the power system how it is operating safely then at the same time under fault conditions then what precaution you have to take what protection you have to take then how to uh, isolate the fault then how to bring back the system in the normal position for all these things what you need is the power system planning design and the the operation of the power system at the same time as the demand increases then you have to plan for the new generation the transmission as well as the distribution at the same time what is the main idea behind is that there are three factors they are governing the the power system that is one is you have to give electricity to the consumers more reliable power supply quality of power supply with the most economic way these are the three factors which govern the the total of the satisfactory operation of the the power system i told you there are three components main three components in the the power system one is the generator the transformer transmission line and at the the distribution level once again the there is a transformer that is step down transformer when it is a transmitting level that is the step up transformer then it is ultimately we are going for the the load we know that the voltage is generating the generating station with a voltage level around 13.8 kilovolts to 24 kilovolts and we can uh, transmit the the voltage to the the consumer load end with a high voltage for economic purposes some of the high voltage levels of the transmission lines are it is 115 kilovolts 130 kilovolts and it can be also transmitted at 230 kilovolts now as and when there is a there is a development in the power system there is a provision of extra high voltage transmission with the 345 45 kilovolts 500 kilovolts and even 765 kilovolts now it is reached to 100 1000 kilovolts and 1500 kilovolts with the extra high voltage the transmission we know that these are the advantages for the economic economics purpose then at the step down level that is we are stepping down the voltage once it is reaching the load centers that is around 34.5 kilovolts to 138 kilovolts then further 34.5 kilovolts can be further reduced to the popularly popular voltage is ln kv thereby 433 phase and 230 single phase these are the three main components of the the power system what we are seeing in the the overall power system these are the pioneers of the our a power system one is george washington house and another is thomas alva the addition 
then we have discussed the power system the power system is nothing but it is a combination of the generation transmission and the distribution generation transmission and the distribution ultimately this distributed power should be utilized that is the another component is the utilization generation transmission and distribution ultimately you have to utilize this then the main the power system analysis is that you have to coordinate all generation transmission and distribution so that the load can be met properly with most economic way most reliable way at the same time with the quality power supply that is the, the main mantra of the, the power system analysis that is control of these functions at appropriate level is very much essential for giving better electricity to the, the consumer then this power system analysis can be studied under two different heads one is called as steady state condition that is that is the load as well as the generation they are fixed there is no fluctuation there is no changing factors in the system in that case it is called as a steady state condition in the dynamic state that is there is change in the load or change in the generation or change in the both then it is a dynamic condition therefore power system analysis can be studied under two different heads one is a steady state condition the another one is the dynamic condition under both steady and dynamic conditions it is a network may be operating under normal condition or it may be operated under the faulted condition under these two conditions you can studying studying the power system analysis we are going to the depth in this that is broadly the power system analysis can be studied under two different heads steady state condition and the dynamic conditions under steady and dynamic conditions once again we are studying under the network under balanced condition and network under the faulted condition the some of the the power system studies we were carrying out in the the power systems are important some of the things i am listing out here that is one of the the analysis what we are doing is the power flow studies we should be able to analyze the performance of the power system if you know about the power system it is under normal operating condition or in the abnormal or faulted conditions we must know what is the voltage loss what is the current what is the active power what is the reactive power what is the load angle what is the power factor all those th these factors are necessary to know about design and the operation of the the power system this information you are getting from the the power flow studies that is why in the second point what he is pointing out here is that the analysis in the normal study operation is called as a power flow studies that is the power flow studies are carried out in the the steady state condition it gives the information regarding it is target to determine the voltages currents real and reactive power flows in system under given load condition at any given load condition and generation what is the voltage level what is the current what is the real power what is the react power that you are this information what we are getting from power flow studies then the purpose of this power flow studies is to plan ahead the account for various hypothetical situation for instance what if a transmission line within the power system properly supplying the load must be taken off line for a maintenance can the remaining lines in the system handle the required loads without exceeding their rated parameters that is the sum of the information what we are getting you are having all the information what is active power what is the reactive power what is the voltage what is the current and what is the capacity of the different transmission line then what is the load everything we know suppose load is 100 megawatt we have got the 100 megawatt three lines are there then there is no fun in running all the three transmission line just you have to look into that is one of the line can be carried out take a, uh, or two lines to be taken off and the one line can sufficient to meet the the required demand then other can be taken it for the maintenance to know about to make the all the calculations all the permutation combinations then we need the power flow studies this is one of the analysis what we are doing in the power system the another important studies or analysis is the economic load dispatch that is economic load dispatch is nothing but 
it is a one of the most important one in the power system operation and the control that is we know that the economic dispatch is the name itself gives it is nothing but it is a process of appropriating the total load on a system between the various generating plants to achieve the greatest economy of operation that is we have got so many generations that is a nuclear power plant there is a thermal power plant there is a hydel power plant there is solar is also pumping into the the grid okay then you have to combine this generation so that which generation is most economical to meet the required demand that is what we are calling is economic load dispatch you have to pool it the different generation you have to pool the generation in a such a way that you have to get the minimum cost to minimum fuel cost so that the the consumer can be levied with less electricity bill that is why he is telling that the main objective of the economic load dispatch problem is to determine optimal combination of the power outflows optimal combination of the output that is it has to meet the demand with all different types of generating units the another important study is in the uh, power flow a uh, power system analysis is load frequency control we know that when there is a generation is fixed when the load is goes on increasing ultimately the voltage will dip at the same time the frequency is also decreasing but our main motto to the consumer is that you have to give the electricity the quality electricity the quality electricity means with a prescribed voltage and a prescribed frequency that is the voltage level should not be fall or increase more than plus or minus 5% and frequency should also be not it varies from plus to minus 5% of 50 hertz for that whenever there is change in the load with a constant the generation then the frequency will reduces then automatically you have to control that frequency then what we are calling is load frequency control so that what you are doing you are in you input to the generation you are increasing so that generator is increasing that is the generator output is increasing at the same time it is a increased demand can be met comfortably and the frequency will bring back to the its normal value that is a 50 hertz that is why it is called as a load frequency control ultimately it is a automatic uh, generation control is also the another the studies that is it is a similar fashion in the case of the load frequency control control as the load increases you have to meet the the extra load by generating extra voltage uh, extra power from the generating that is what we are calling is agc the another study is what we need is the inter area transmission of the power system through the the tie line these are the different the types of the analysis you are carrying out in the the power system apart from this there are other the power system analysis uh, you are carrying out that is such as the fault calculations system protection reliability analysis contingency analysis stability studies these are the other uh the, the studies were carrying out in the power system this is a introductory note of the power system analysis in the next session we we'll start with the single line diagram